3D Zombie with Moving Arms Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hello everyone! In today's video I'm going to be doing more of my Halloween three-dimensional designs and this one is going to be the zombie with the arms that can be lifted up and they can go so they're like <laughs> like that brains. Yep, it's pretty cool, it's a lot of fun, it's a little bit time consuming but if you have some patience it shouldn't be too hard i hope you like it and don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos and future halloween designs as well so the first thing you're going to do is create your background which for me i just went with straight up white i wanted to make sure that my zombie was definitely visible and that you could see him so i wanted to avoid any really busy background and any busy background colors um i wanted to give him the classic exposed brain so I didn't want to do a red background or green or any of those colors that he would potentially just blend right into. So I thought white was the best way to go for that just to make sure that it was easy to see him and that all the colors showed up really vibrantly. Clear would also be another way to go that would once again give it an easy to see appearance. Um, but I'd avoid any colors that you're going to use in the design especially just to avoid such things. And now I am also going to add a layer of clear over the top of my white. This is to give this nail strength, especially since it is so very long. You want to always put clear on top of your colors like that just because the pigments get in the way of the interlocking polymers and so it's a weaker product whereas clear since there isn't any of those pigments or glitter or anything that is interfering with it they interlock and they're very very strong so now i'm going to be filing the nail with a 180 grit file to remove anything that's not supposed to be there any lumps bumps or imperfections any weird stuff happening and also thin it out it doesn't have to be a super thick layer of clear acrylic and then i'm going to buff it with a 240 grit pad of buffer to remove the scratches that the first file may have left behind and now i'm going to be applying a layer of gel sealer and throwing that into my lamp to cure so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how long I want my zombie shoulders to be and I'm going to cut off a little piece of a straw and then I'm going to cut off a chunk of the straw just so that it's about halfway so it's got a nice flat edge to sit on to attach the nail and then where I want his shoulders to be I'm going to put some nail glue down glue that tiny little piece of straw on there hold it on there till that glue is set which always seems like it takes longer than it needs to I don't know I'm impatient I guess and then I'm going to be sculpting out my zombie and I'm using this gray green color that's actually a mixed color of acrylic that I mixed a long time ago for when I was making my three-dimensional Cruella de Vil. And as I was thinking, mm, I'm going to need to mix acrylic for my zombie. And I thought, hey, hey, no, I've already done that and it's going to work and it'll be perfect. And I was astonished I could find it. Sometimes after you do something like that, you can never find it. You think, oh, I should save this for later in case I ever need it again. And then you can never find it if you do happen to need it again. But I was fortunate enough to be able to find it. Anyways, so I'm going to be sculpting out my zombie. And I don't want the area where his brain is going to be to have green underneath it. So I want to make sure I have that little indent made already. And then I'm going to just go. And when you do his shoulders, go up and over that straw. But make sure that that's incredibly thin. Because his shoulders are already going to be a little bit thicker and bulkier. Just because that straw is underneath it. Whereas if you make sure that that uh, green acrylic that's on top of it is super thin... Thick enough, obviously, that it's opaque and you can't see the straw through it, but it doesn't have to have a whole bunch of acrylic on top of it. And then below that, you're going to want to add his ribs. So the first thing I did is I just put down a thin little sort of pancake. And then with the very tip of my brush, I'm going to start just sort of gouging out his ribs. And this doesn't have to be perfect. You're mostly going to be covering it up with some clothing later. I guess you could leave your zombie naked if you wanted to. Um, I decided to give him clothes just as a courtesy, but <laughs> I'm going to be making his skeletal shape underneath it so that what does show through the clothing in the various holes and tears in it does look right. Because if you don't, you don't know at this point, unless your planning skills are way advanced, I don't know exactly how the clothes are going to look. Even if I have it planned out, you never know exactly how things are going to turn out until you do it and you see how it is. And so if you make sure that the base layer, that under layer, all of these skeletal, green, fleshy, everything is exactly how it would be if you were to take his clothes off, then once you put the clothes on and there's parts that are still showing through, you know they're going to be right because they were right before you put the clothes there in the first place. If that makes sense, I really hope it does. Sometimes I say things and then I listen back to it and it's like... I'm babbling on and I'm sure nobody understands the thing I say. So yeah. Anyways, now I'm going to be adding another layer of that wonderful green over the top of the upper section of his skull. So not his teeth, um, but just that upper part. And I'm going to be taking the tip of my brush and I'm going to gouge out his eye sockets and his nasal cavity. 
just like that pretty easy just poke your brush in if you have that layer underneath it that's already set when you put that on then you know that there's not going to be it's not going to go all the way down through to the white and I am talking over the part that is happening right now. So you're going to need to add some red for his brains and then choose a color, any color. I went with orange and I'm going to be adding his shirt. The reason I went with orange is because if you look at a color wheel, this is getting technical. I'm talking about color wheels. If you look at a color wheel though, and you look and you want colors to appear really bright and vibrant, you want to go across the wheel. So orange and blue are opposite colors, but orange and slightly muddy gray green are pretty close to opposite colors they're not but they're far away from each other which is a good thing to do just because like i said those colors are going to appear very bright and very vivid they're also going to be easy to see against each other where if you did this gray green and then you did gray you're not going to see his shirt very well it's just going to kind of blend in so you want to make sure that you go for things that are definitely different colors to make sure that they're visible easy to see and it doesn't make your eyes hurt to look at or to focus on what you're seeing. And now I'm going to be adding his eye. And so I'm just going to add a tiny little bead into one of those eye sockets. So you can choose which one. I decide to go with the side that's less brainy. I figure I have a little more room there. And then I'm going to add a whole bunch of little beads of white to add his teeth and kind of like a goofy hillbilly smile there. Because <laughs> you always associate hillbillies with zombies. And now I'm going to be basically filling in the little holes of the straw so i'm just going to take more of that gray green and i'm going to add a bead in there and i'm just going to pat it in so that it's flush with the edge of the straw i'm going to do that on both sides and then i'm going to take a piece of wire this is the wire that's going to be the base of his arms and i'm going to poke it through there and i'm going to just first dunk it in some clear acrylic but then push it in make sure wiggle it back and forth spin it around a little bit and then let that set once it's set you can bend your wire the reason you put the acrylic inside the straw is because that's going to give some resistance so that when you bend your straw up and down it's not going to just fall if you try to have his arm straight up it's going to stay up it's not going to just crash and burn because there's a little bit of resistance in there and there's a little bit of friction and it's going to hold itself and now i missed this part take a piece of saran wrap and put that underneath the wire of his arms after they're bent and trimmed into the right shape and then you can cover up the arms the wire of the arms with some more green acrylic that gray green and anything that gets on the saran wrap is just going to pop off and you're not going to worry about it but if it was if I'm gonna lose my voice if that wasn't there and you got some on the orange it's probably going to leave a mark on the orange this is just that little piece of saran wrap is just like a protection to make sure that you don't get acrylic where you don't want it and there's other things you could use. You could use a nail form backing if you wanted. I think saran wrap is easier because you can see through it and see the zombie body underneath. And it's a little bit more uh, flexible so you can mold it around your nail a little simpler and easier. Um, that being said, if you are making something sculpting on it, you would probably rather use a nail form or a nail form backing because the plastic wrap leaves little wrinkle marks and you don't necessarily want little wrinkle marks. But anyways cover your zombie arms with green you can also add like a little bulk around where the elbow would be and add more and finger shapes on the hands too um it's really small so a detailed hand probably isn't plausible but just more acrylic and sort of imply the shape of a hand is really all that needs to be done there and more of that can be done later on more of the hand shape the different fingers when you paint later after that's set you can remove the plastic wrap lift up his arms and then add more acrylic where it needs to be because underneath and like on the insides of his arms probably there's going to be some wire showing so just make sure that all that wire gets covered up because little silver spots you don't need those um and then add a little bit of red here and there to make it look like his arms are a little bit beaten and bloody and i'm going to be highlighting my zombie the flesh areas with a lighter shade of green so it's sort of a moss green and i have diluted that moss green so that it it's not so intense I'm just going to highlight the areas where it needs to be. So mostly it's on his face, but then a little bit on his arms and on his ribs and any place where it really needs to be. You don't want to completely cover up your gray green because then that's going to just get rid of the whole point of highlighting. You just want to add little bits here and there to give it a little more shape. And then do your white highlights on his eyeball and his teeth. And then also do some white highlighting on his clothing. So make sure you definitely dilute it when you're doing the clothing or you're going to have these white streaks that don't make any sense. But if you dilute it, the color from underneath will show through and it'll look right and then with pink add the little zigzags in his brains and also add a couple little highlights on the bloody gashes on his arms with black at his pupil add some diluted black in each eye socket and also in the nasal cavity 
around the brain a little bit, give some more definition around his teeth, in his shirt. Just do some shadows in there wherever you see fit. That's also going to really help with the three-dimensional. And now I'm going to be applying matte top coat around my zombie and over my zombie. Make sure you lift up his arms when you do this so that you can cover his arms 360 degrees with that matte top coat so that it's all smooth and even. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this design. It's a lot of fun. Please share any recreations with me on Facebook and Instagram. Please take me though because I'd love to see them and if you don't, I'll probably miss it. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!